Hey guys, JP from Trexphere, and I'm here with Keith the Candido. Hello. Hello. Um, so again, in a wonderful Ticonderoga, uh, we're here with uh, the Gorn. Hi, Gorn. <laughs> um, and we um, we just went to your uh, panel in uh, the city hall. Is, is it really a panel if it's well, only me talking? <laughs> guess. Presentation? Q and A? I don't know. What well, do it was. It wasn't bit... much of a Q and A. Nobody asked any questions. Well, I did. You did. Yes, it was more of an A. <laughs> um well um so we we talked a bit about uh the you know uh, how mostly uh we talked discovery and we talked uh nadia uh, bako yeah you're uh the character that you created as a president of the federation in uh the post nemesis uh, well yes. basically post nemesis yeah, era um one thing I, I want to know is because I've uh, I, I really love that character. Thank you. Um, is uh, so I heard you basically uh, based the character off your uh, great grandmother. Yes, my my great grandmother uh, came to Italy when she was a kid from Italy to mm -hmm. the, to the United States when she was a, a little kid, and she moved to rural Western Pennsylvania and proceeded to have ten kids. Uh, the oldest of whom was my grandmother, uh, and her oldest grandchild was my mother, and her oldest great grandchild was me. <laughs> so, and she was she was the matriarch of this huge family, and she was just an amazing woman. And she died in two thousand three at the ripe old age of ninety eight, and that's when I was working on a time for a time for peace, which was the uh, the novel that introduced her. Mm -hmm. And so, when I was coming up with the Federation president, I was going to create to replace Min Zeif, uh, who had resigned in in Dave Mack's uh, previous duology. I patterned her after, at least to some extent, after um, after my great grandmother. Uh, there, there were some other people in yeah. there too. There's uh, uh, two people from Texas, actually. Uh, Molly Ivins, who was a political writer, and Ann Richards, who was governor of Texas for a while. The, the, they were they were in the mix too. As was as is obvious to anybody who's seen The West Wing. There's a lot of Jed Bartlett in yeah. there as well. Uh, I freely admit that. But um, that's. That's how that character mm -hmm. came about, um, and uh, so so you got to develop a lot of about the politics. Is that something you enjoyed? I guess since you wrote it, did yeah. I've uh, politics is a is a. I've always been fascinated in politics, both mm. uh, real and fictional, and uh, it it frustrated me that in you know still you know we're now fifty two years <laughs> since Star Trek was created, and we've seen damn little of the Federation government. Mm. Uh, we know far more than we ever needed to about the Klingon government, about the Romulan government, about the Bajoran government, about the Cardassian government. Uh, we learn bupkis about the Federation, except that there is a Federation Council and that there is a Federation President. We have seen all of three pres presidents on screen. Um, a few more were established in tie-in fiction, but not much was done with it. And there are lots of situations where it would be useful to mm -hmm. you know, know who that was. And so I, just, I went out, set about to create the Federation government based on what little information we had. I tried to create something that was sort of a combination of the Democratic Republic that we have in the United States with the parliamentary style of government that you have in Canada and the UK and tried to make that work. <laughs> um, <laughs> especially within the constraints of um, the, the the inability to actually use money as a factor. Mm. And do you know how much of government... There was a great line yeah. in the West Wing that Josh Lyman said, there's only two things that, that stop the government from doing whatever it wants. Um, will and money. And money was taken out of the equation. Mm. So uh, I had to come up with other things. But there's still allocation of resources. There's still yeah. stuff that has to be dealt with, and I tried to deal with it. Plus, we're only a few years out of the Dominion War and the changes that wrought in the Federation, which takes a while to, to get over. Um, speaking of which, you also got to basically introduce some a big factor in the in the books, which is the Typhon Pact. Yes. Uh, how did that work between the authors to to get that big piece of that was that was something that was conceived by Marco Palmieri, okay, uh, who was at the time one of the the Trek editors. He was the one. He was my editor on on Articles of the Federation. He was the one developing um, most of the uh, the the post finale uh, Deep Space Nine mm -hmm. and Voyage. And uh, he inherited the Voyager novels as well, and um, and the idea was to, in the wake of the Destiny trilogy, uh, in which seven thousand Borg cubes came pouring into the Alpha Quadrant and blew up a large chunk of it, uh, in the chaos of that, to create sort of a new adversary for the Federation. 
And then Marco got laid off. <laughs> um, but uh, and then it fell to Margaret Clark, who was in charge of of, of handling it. Mm-hmm. But the the idea was to to have you know something something for the Federation to deal with in this post Destiny setup when the Federation was really badly battered. Uh, uh, and it was it was it developed organically. It was it was you know we figured Marco and I worked out who would be in it, and then we were gonna you know a bunch of writers would then take over from there and and do the more detailed looks at them. I was just there to set it up. Um, was it but a, it was it was it was a fun way. To, you know, we were because since two thousand two, since Nemesis, mm-hmm. on screen Trek has been focused on either the twenty second or the twenty third centuries. So the 24th century was basically wide open, and and the powers that be pretty much gave Simon and Schuster carte blanche to do whatever they wanted post Nemesis. So you know we wanted to do stuff that would be of interest, not to do just straight up ship of the week, yeah, you know, monster uh, planet of the week stories, but to really move the universe mm-hmm. forward. And something well the, from the two books I read of yours, uh, something I enjoyed is the absence of the main characters from Star Trek. It's all about the. The, the, yeah, the surrounding characters that was well in 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 a singular destiny that was part of the point the there were other books that mm. were going to deal with the main characters it that a singular destiny was one of several books that were specifically designed to as we i jokingly referred to it at the time cleaning up dave max mess <laughs> and uh um dave is dave is one of my best friends uh we were each in each other's wedding parties mm. um so he is, he is one of my absolute dearest friends so i say that with all love that i am mm. Constantly cleaning up Dave's mess. <laughs> and, um, he, but he he left a, left a, on purpose. Left mm. left this major disaster. There were novels that were going to deal with it from the crews we were familiar with. Will Eisner mm-hmm. did his Losing the Peace novel. Kirsten Beyer did the Full Circle novel for Voyager, um, and uh, uh, I forget who did the Titan book uh, that followed up. I think it might have been Christopher. It might have been Jim Swallow. I forget. But this was like. Ten years ago, but um, uh, the um, but so so the individual crews were being handled. How they were dealing with yeah. the crisis was them. What my job specifically with the singular destiny was to look at the bigger picture. What was what was happening in the galaxy at large? Uh, so that that was baked into the premise. And that with articles, it was a case of one. I did have there were more there were familiar I and mean, there were familiar characters in both, but. The focus was on the government specifically. That was the idea. I still brought in familiar characters. Spock is in it. The EMH is in it. Uh, Janeway makes a brief appearance in it. A um, few others. So I, you know, it wasn't completely bereft of familiar characters from the screen. Yeah. But that wasn't what those books were about. They were about you know the stuff we don't see, which is part of the fun of, of tie-in fiction. Yeah. You can do that. You can you can explore the side alleys and the odd things and the parts that don't necessarily fit into the main. Yeah. thing but stories that still deserve to be told so so well, well thank you very much for for being here did you enjoy the uh the tour i loved it it was it i i go into that tour and i'm eight years old again you know <laughs> it just i've i've literally been watching star trek since birth mm. you know i grew up watching the original series with my parents uh i i grew up in new york city and one of the local independent stations aired it at six o'clock every weeknight mm. so that was our routine we come home from work or school or wherever We'd sit down at six o'clock. We watch an episode of the original series. We eat dinner. You know that was that was what we did, and that was my childhood. And the fact that I get to write, I've gotten to write Star Trek fiction and write about Star Trek as I've been doing for Tor.com, is wonderful to me. And it's it's just it it and coming here, it's literally a childhood dream come true because I've always wanted to be able to walk around the Enterprise set. <laughs> now I can. Yeah. There are uh, pictures of me in the captain's chair. You can't take that away from me. So, well, um, that's everything uh, today. And uh, so we can read you on Tor.com where... Yes, I've been uh, currently... Uh, Tor.com still has archived my rewatches of uh, The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and the original series. Mm-hmm. The original series rewatches includes not only the three seasons of live action, but the two animated seasons and all all of the movies. Uh, all ten movies starring the original... Mm-hmm. Uh, the TOS characters. The... Uh, I've also got reviews of each episode to date of Star Trek Discovery, which went up basically when they aired. The the show would go live Mm -hmm. on Sunday. My review would go up on Monday. Um, There's all sorts of entertaining speculations in there that turned out to be completely wrong, (laughs) (laughs) which is part of the fun. And uh, currently I'm also doing uh, uh, the great superhero movie rewatch for them, writing about uh, all the live action adaptations of comic book superheroes in movie form. Uh, and I've been writing other things. I'll be reviewing. I've reviewed uh, several of Marvel's Netflix series for them, and I'll be reviewing uh, 
I've done Iron Fist uh, and The Punisher and The Defenders, and I'll be doing Luke Cage season two for them as well, and uh, and some other stuff as well, uh, and lots of other fiction, lots of other stuff. You can if you go to decandido.net, you can that's a link dump for everywhere you can, everywhere you can efficiently cyber stalk me is pretty much there. So uh, that's that's where you should go. So, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. <laughs>